Hello everyone. I wish you a good day, a good afternoon and a good evening. Welcome to the Spurn Virtual Debates 2020 scrimmage for today. Our host today is Bert Dick, who will be managing the technical aspect of a match. Our judges are Phyllis Redhair and Kurt Faisalski. Phyllis Redhair has an education in emergency management and homeland security, broad interest in relief, rebuilding, rebuilding efforts, including emergency planning, preparedness and mitigation for natural and man-made disasters, and earth science, a well-rounded education also focused on homeland security, international relations, historical political implications, the political economy, global issues, politics, and human rights. Kurt Feifelsky is the Assistant Director of Debate at the University of Michigan and a PhD candidate in Comparative Public Policy at Wayne State University. And I am the timekeeper and facilitator for Room 12, and my name is Sovik Mukherjee. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort, not on any preset NSS position. NSS clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore and develop and settle space. However, NSS also believes that open, honest debate will facilitate that goal. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case. No statement by any debater or coach is an official position of NSS. Okay, let's meet our debaters. Team Energia, please give us your name, home country, ethnicity, please. Hello, my name is Nicola Omara. I'm from Romania and I'm Romanian. Hi, I'm Pranid. I'm from India and I'm, from, I'm an Indian. Hello, my name is Mattia Marcelli. I'm from Romania. I'm half Italian and half Romanian. Thank you, Team Energia. Team New Glenn, please give us your name, home country, ethnicity, please. Hello, everyone. I am Lucky Bontala and I'm an Indian. Uh, my name is Samral Haushi. I've grown up in the United States in Southern Florida, and both of my parents are from Egypt. Oh, hello, I'm Diana. I'm from Romania. Mm, hello, I am Radu. I am also Romanian, living in Romania. <laughs> And I'm glad to be here. Thank you, everyone. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your participants icon. Please mute your, please mute your mic unless you're speaking and only the presenting team and judges should turn on their videos unless chatted by the moderator. Here is the format for our debate today. Each member of team Energia will speak for two minutes, taking the affirmative position. I will let the speaker know when two minutes is reached. After, after the affirmative eight minutes, Team New Glenn each speaking for two minutes and will give their negative argument. After hearing the argument, after hearing the argument, our host will open the breakout for five minute conversations for teams to prepare the summaries and judges to confer. The breakout will close and the affirmative side with only one person from Team Energia now presenting their three minute summary I'll indicate when a time limit has expired. Finally, one person from team from negative side, Team New Glenn, will present their three minute summary and indicate the time limit if needed. If there is time, the judges may ask a question of the teams. The questions may be answered by any and all the members of the team. The judges will use the breakouts, discuss the finding and determine the match winner. After eight minutes, judges will return to the common Zoom room to give the decision and feedback, should time allow. We have a hard debate session stop at 9.15 a.m. CDT for this room. All right, Mr. Becker, do we have only the judges and the affirmative team with live videos and mics? Thank you. Let's get started. We'll hear from the first speaker from Team Energia representing the affirmative position for Resolution B. The gateway will be critical in expanding human presence to the moon and deeper into the solar system. Team Energia, your first speaker may begin now. 
When men first stepped on the moon in 1969, people thought it was staged as a gimmick on TV. Since then, space exploration has proven not only to be real, but also miraculous. Just think about what a public and private partnership was able to accomplish yesterday in Florida with people around the world cheering the astronauts on. The framework of today's debate is assessing how essential the gateway really is. It's not about whether it is good or bad or using it instead of everything else, but whether or not it is really a necessary component for going further into outer space. The answer is yes. The reasons include the security it provides, its role as a staging point even to future journeys to Mars, and how it is necessary for research in a different way than a direct lunar landing. And this all ties together to promote universalization. The bottom line is that the gateway saves lives and creates an important ripple effect in the process. It strengthens public awareness and perception, which, is, which then impacts political decision, which then impacts future missions, financing, and allows opportunity to continue. There are risks like propeller failure, the ability to take off the lunar surface, or even the insufficiency of fuel and other resources. And they are real, but they are not exclusive just to the gateway. Having a gateway in this situation provides astronauts with a backup plan. Dale Scran, cha chair of the NSS executive community, says, states that the gateway is necessary practice for a Mars transportation vehicle and states that it could also serve as a real fuel depot and transportation node. Also, the NASA Langley Research Center claims mission optimization software will be used to scope the impact of the gateway operations on human exposure to radiation. This is extremely important since the gateway is located outside the magnetosphere of Earth. Additionally, the gateway creates pseudogravity overcoming the challenges of microgravity experienced in space. Success in outer space will only occur when countries cooperate and collaborate, and we will prove that it is it, that in this debate. This is humanity working together in order to achieve a historical goal. This is a universalization mindset. Now, Pranil will explain why the gateway is important for research. Thank you. Thank you, speaker one. Maybe have one speaker two now. Yeah, before you start timing me, I would like to tell you that I'm going to do both the roles of speaker two and three. For timing purposes, I'll stop in the middle. Thank you. Okay, can I start now? Yes, one, two, three, go. Thank you, Mara. Since 1969, we had many missions to Moon. First, we believed that Moon was the best place for existence of life. But after new discoveries, all the focus shifted towards Mars. Now, after 48 years, we turned back to our closest celestial body. But this time, we'll not repeat the same mistakes. Thereof, globalization is now over. We are in the golden era of space exploration, taking the first step towards the welfare of humanity. Now, this is not about NASA, ESA, or JAXA. This time, it is the humans going to the moon with a universalization mindset. The Lunar Gateway is an end-development mini space station in lunar orbit for supporting the first crewed mission to the station. This will be composed of only two modules, PPE and HAL. This base is part of an Artemis program, which includes the crewed mission by the E-2024. According to NASA.gv, there are three purposes of this mission. They are to study the moon, to explore its resources, and to serve as a stepping stone for Mars. Today, I'll focus on how the gateway is critical for research. James Carpenter, a member of ESS Lunar Exploration Team, explains that the gateway assists in our overall research efforts in a number of ways. First, it allows us to study the effects of radiation on human physiology and to study the effects of moon and sun with the Earth's magnetosphere. It also provides us an opportunity to collect and research the dust particles that come from asteroids or comets or possibly even from outside a solar system. In addition to that, the gateway would also be ideal platform for launching tiny CubeSat satellites and other devices that could open up the exploratory research of the solar system. Lastly, it provides an easy access to the lunar surface with the ability to remotely operate rovers and study the samples directly there without bringing them to Earth. As Mara explained, the gateway is important for universalization because it is a collaborative work of NASA, CSA, ESA, and JAXA. And as we are seeing in this worldwide pandemic, when countries work together on challenges, we can find solutions for all. Can I start with my uh, speaker three? Thank you, speaker two. Speaker three, you may start now. We already have the ISS in the low Earth orbit, so do we really need a gateway? As I mentioned earlier, the purpose of the gateway is completely different from that of the ISS. Its location is also different, tying in the point that is the current location of the gateway, which is near rectilinear halo orbit, also known as NRHO. It provides benefits be better than the other LLO orbits, that is uh, near the equator or the poles of the moon. But its value is often misunderstood, though it's a safe and viable location and can become a future research, research platform. The also understanding that universalization is a key moving forward 
the gateway and its location have been agreed upon the main countries participating in it this inst uh, this instills further cooperation and trust which is crucial for the universalization effort one stage to space.com shows that the orbital location and the fact that the fuel consumption concerns and the directional instability issues are no longer a problem extended visits and hovering around the semi stable points is now possible long term research does not need to use too much fuel for the location of the gateway nasa also uh, uh, st NASA studies from nasa also shows that that com in continuous communication is impossible for the smaller llo elo and the frozen orbits while the l2 point on the other hand is helpful for continuous communication with the earth due to its na nature of small periodic movements around the or um, orbit of moon even nasa explains that nrs are halo orbits with large amplitudes either over the north or south pole meaning that it will take less time to go to the opposite poles this helps in research lastly coming to the orion's propellant load limitation this is impossible to access other orbits other if the gateway was located in some other orbit except the nrhf now uh, the gateway will potentially enhance space exploration and location because of its long, long term stays and um, its solutions for many problems here on it so matia is going to conclude by uh, giving the importance of universalization and tying all the points which we said up to now Thank you, Speaker 3. And finally, on Speaker 4 now. Thank you, Perniel. The next stage of human development is clearly universalization. As such, a good starting point would be the internationally accessible lunar gateway. And today, we've shared a number of reasons why this is critical for moon exploration and beyond. To begin with, the gateway acts as a safety and security checkpoint, making a life or death difference for the astronauts in space. We explained the location, which ensures a great base for future expeditions, both from a financial and ease of use perspective. People will also stay there for longer periods of time, allowing research on long-term exposure to the conditions on the moon. The gateway is also less expensive in the ronda, long run than just a simple lunar base. Looking into why such a thing is the case, we need to analyze the politics of the gateway. Specifically, it would have a quicker buy-in from politicians and the general public, persuading them with the most important thing of them all results. This would bring people in, getting them to talk, to have a discussion, and most importantly, propagating space awareness and space education. We also want to make clear through our speech that discussing the gateway does not in any way imply mutual exclusivity, such as a lunar base. We're not saying that the gateway is the only thing critical when it comes to making the first steps towards universalization. It is also not unreasonable to think as a gateway of the gateway as a potential place for humanity to thrive back should a planet-wide cataclysm occur. This leads to our conclusion, and one of the crucial reasons why the Lunar Gateway is critical in both expanding human presence to the moon and deeper into the solar system, to ensure the species' survival. Currently, COVID-19 is wreaking havoc around the world. This pandemic is not without its lesson, showing us that no matter how well prepared we are, the unexpected may always be just around the corner. The Lunar Gateway serves as a critical cooperative effort of many countries ready to work together so we can venture far beyond the planet and pave the road of evolution with the next stop being on universalization. Thank you. Thank you, Team Energia. And now before we move on to Team New Glenn, I would like to introduce our alternate judge, Larry Ahern. Larry Ahern is an alternate judge for today in case of technical problems. He has been a space activist for over 30 years and a member of NSS for more than 25 years. He has served as an NSS officer or director since 1988. His positions have included NSS vice president and chapters coordinator. Mr. Ahern has served on many NSS committees and is currently a member of the awards, bylaws, chapters and the membership committees. Thank you for joining us today. And now it's time for us to hear from Team New Glenn. Speaker 1 from Team New Glenn. Your time starts now. We must begin by negating the resolution that the gateway will be critical in expanding human presence into space. NASA declared the gateway as a small spaceship in orbit around the moon that will provide access to more of the nuclear sur lunar surface than ever before. The word critical is defined by the Cambridge Dictionary as one of the greatest importance to the way things might happen. So is the gateway critical to expanding human presence into space? No, it is not. Humans have been to the moon before. In 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first person to set foot on the moon. NASA Apollo program produced six moon landings in total. 48 years have gone by since Apollo 17, the last flight, and the moon still remains one of our goals. 
PC remarked, NASA removed the gateway from the critical path to get into the moon by 2024. Doug Rivero, the head of NASA's human space flight management, said that they removed the gateway in favor of simpler solution. At the same meeting, he also declared that they want to remove all the things that add risk to the program. The question is, how could the gateway be critical when even NASA said it could be re replaced by simpler and less dangerous solutions? Another problem is that the gateway is distracting, delaying and taking funds away from projects that could actually be critical in expanding human presence into space, like the ones my teammates will present. Former NASA astronaut and commander of the ISS, Terry Burtz, wrote in 2018 that the gateway would sh shackle human exploration, not enable it. The gateway can and should be replaced, which means it's not critical to expanding human presence into space or to universalization. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 1. May we hear from Speaker 2 now. The Gateway will be just another space station like the ISS, but nearer to the Moon instead of Earth. The ISS is a great space station that can help humanity to reach the Moon and any other part of the solar system as well as the Gateway. Any perceived advantage of the Gateway's proximity to the Moon isn't important anymore. As Diana explained, our technology has already reached Mars and the orbit of many, many more planets. So the distance becomes smaller and smaller in terms of time and money. Some may argue that the Gateway won't be affected by the Earth's gravity in the way the ISS is affected, but this gravity isn't a problem today. Think about the Curiosity rover. Its equipment, uh, the Curiosity rover and its equipment weight nearly a ton, the weight of 10 people plus equipment, and it reached Mars with no problems, while still being launched from Earth and having an overcome of 100% of Earth's gravity. Even Elon Musk's roaster weighed 1,300 kilograms, so trust me, gravitational force won't be a problem. Some may argue that the ISS doesn't have the same technological capabilities as the proposed gateway, but because the gateway hasn't been built yet, we can use its equipment and funding to improve the ISS and maintain it for many, many more years. Also, the gateway will contain a power and propulsion element. So, if necessary, it can be used to move the ISS to a new orbit. So even the gravity problem can be solved easily. The ISS would then become a greater alternative that can be used for any kind of mission. Also, the ISS is called international for a reason. It can be used by any nation of the world. So it can continue to help us achieve universalization. We aren't focused in this debate on whether or not the gateway can be built, but rather on the fact that it is not critical to the expansion of human presence in space. The gateway's functions could be easily handled by the ISS, making this additional station unnecessary. Also, the, negative, the affirmative team told us that the gateway can be a backup problem, but, also, but in this case, the ISS can even provide uh, the same type of backup that we Thank need. you, Speaker 2, but your time is up. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe hear from Speaker 3 now. Our third contention is that a base on the moon would be a better alternative. The risk of building and operating the gateway in space is very high because there would be no gravity and if something was wrong, it is very difficult to repair. Instead, we can make a lunar base to serve, to serve proposed functions of the gateway while taking advantage on being on moon. First, moon has gravity, which is 1.625 meter per second square and a lot of surface area, which makes it easier to build than it would be. And it would also allow large structures to be constructed. Secondly, according to Britannica.com, the moon has major resources like solar power, oxygen, water, hydrogen, helium, nitrogen, and, uh, and many metals like iron, titanium, aluminum, silicon, and magnesium. For proposed lunar gateway, all the resources should be transported from the Earth. Thirdly, as of now, the population is increasing. The hope of mankind is in other sustainable planets like Mars. According to uh, National Geographic said that we need to colonize, uh, if we want to colonize a planet like Mars, then the major step is to build up a base on the moon and expand the research deeper into the solar system. We affirm this resolution. We wouldn't be able to get people to the surface of the moon as soon as directly as possible. And it would definitely not be critical in sending our growing population to more healthy home. And finally, making the base on the moon will make us interplanetary species. And that is a key to universalization. At last, I just want to conclude my speech by comparing the cost of the lunar gateway, which is $30 billion, and a lunar base, which is 
$10 billion. So my contention proves that the lunar base would be better in almost everything while compared to the lunar gate field. Uh, because lunar base is safer, bigger, resourceful, fuel saving, and it makes our next home Mars. And it would be the greatest evolution of mankind. And my uh, next teammate would be saying about more about universalization and why isn't the gateways critical. Thank you. Thank you, Speaker 3. And finally, Speaker 4 from Team Nuclear. One reason why it is simply crucial to negate this resolution is that expanding human presence to the moon and deeper into the solar system requires a solution developed by a group that represents the diversity of humanity. In the affirmation proposal, our planet would try to build a gateway as we did the ISS with a handful of nations collaborating. We will run into the same inevitable issues of priorities of each nation. Who will develop the majority of the gateway itself? Which nation's materials, cargo, and passengers should be prioritized when passing through the gateway? The affirmation has simply not answered these questions. The gateway would not even be diverse as the affirmation suggests. According to a 2019 article on the Parabolic Arc website, the Gateway is currently only being developed by NASA, the European Space Agency, Canada Space Agency, and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. No other nations have proposed to develop the Gateway, and according to data provided by World Meter in 2020, Europe is home to only 9.8% of the world's population, the USA 4.4%, Japan 1.6%, and Canada 0.5%, collectively only 16% of the human population. According to the definition provided by the NSS, universalization considers Earth's space between, within the broader universe and the substantial, substantiality of humanity and our diversity. The creation of the gateway would definitely not be broad, and it would in fact narrow its potential to only three agencies or four agencies, completely disregarding much larger spacefaring powers such as China and India. And according to numerous published articles from each individual agency, the net profit available from China and India's space agencies alone combined is $10.77 billion, whereas the total profit from JAXA and ESA and the CSA is only $9.44 billion. And adding on to this, another issue that is that almost five out of the six races are ignored in its development. Not only this, but we'd be completely ignoring both South America and Africa altogether. Does this sound like universalization? Definitely not. We are completely neglecting extremely important space powers, and we're simply disregarding the true goal of universalization, which is to be inclusive and beneficial from our planet's diversity of opinions and skills into one large concerted power. To conclude, it's simply critical that we negate this resolution for the betterment of technological advancement and universalization, as technology has moved forward and now we don't need a gateway, but the ISS and the surface of- Thank you, Speaker Four, but the time is up. Thank you, Team New Glenn. Well, now, We'll now ask Ms. Be uh, Mr. Becker to open the breakout for five minutes to prepare team summaries and the judges to confer. Please join breakout rooms. Okay, everybody, I'm gonna be putting you into the breakout rooms right now. Okay, we're still, there we go, yep. Everything's, everyone's in. Yes. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Just hope it happens. <laughs> oh. Very good. They did so, a good job. Day three, guys, how are you guys holding up? <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, getting used to it. <laughs> yes. Uh, it seems to be going very smoothly, so well done to both of you. Yeah, yeah, ha has been very smooth, so, at least on my end. I remember when we did the the informational session, yes. that went well, but the, the other session did not go too well. When I think I first, when we first tested this, I had trouble getting everyone into the breakout rooms. Yeah, <laughs> yeah practice makes perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what, if everything went perfectly, though, that wouldn't be as fun, right? That wouldn't be as interesting a memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. You need a few challenges, right? right? <laughs> but I, I think it's been an amazing experience. Um, I think there's so much more value, if, if you don't mind me saying, um, than just the obvious of getting the students to debate and getting the students to communicate more about space. I just think it's, it's interesting for all of us. Mm -hmm. 
No, absolutely. I was talking to them yesterday about that, just the experience of doing this, of working. People were talking, working in different time zones, working with people from other oh countries. A lot of them didn't really know much about space before. And so it's, it's really been great and that this would be useful for them throughout their lives with their, with their the rest of their academic careers and when they get into their professional careers, having this kind of experience. I agree. Yeah. I think the ability to craft an argument, the ability to be persuasive, I mean, that serves you throughout your life. And it's why I'm a debate coach. I, I was a debater in high school and I, you know, I feel like that was the best skill I got actually beyond my classes. Um, and it served me well. You know what I also love? I love that it's helping um, this younger generation at maybe perhaps a younger age than even my generation understand that we really do live in the gray area. It's not black or white, right? And, and, and being able to look at all sides of a situation, right? Because, um, you know, it would be beautiful if with human nature and human interaction, one plus one always equaled two, right? That would make it easy. But that's not really where we all live. And so the value to me of them being able to communicate with each other and really listen to each other and understand where someone else is coming from, to me, that's, that's an incredible opportunity. A reminder for me, too. <laughs> well, I think, I think that is what's, uh, when I look around, no one listens, no one accepts opposing viewpoints anymore. You're labeled immediately if, if you disagree if you disagree with the if i disagree with you you label me and and right i don't know how we move forward with things like that it's uh, so this is this is great experience yeah i i've said many times i think all in my high school you had to take speech to graduate it was an english requirement uh, a semester long speak public speaking class and we debated in that class which is where i got my first, i think all students should be required Oh, yes. You know, I mean, I, I know it's, I know it's up there. It's oftentimes number one on people's greatest fear is speaking in public, but it's, right. but it's this, but you know, right. I think, it's so. yeah, it's but the, the foundation, right. And the it skills, the foundation. right. The skills that underlie that, even if you don't, even if you use them to write an opinion article for your newspaper and you're not actually speaking, <laughs> really good you know these are that's what you're learning so but i'm so grateful my my high school speech teacher was mrs skufka she was at uh kent state university as a college student on may 4th 1970 <laughs> wow wow so was my um i think it was yeah my dean my dean in my high school mm -hmm. also um yeah that's what an interesting time right <laughs> oh my gosh I just closed the breakout rooms. They'll be back in in less than a minute. So okay. just to let everyone know. And Tammy, I'm going to have to pick your brain about Lincoln Douglas when this is all said. And oh, done. I would love to talk Lincoln Douglas. Of course. I have some really um, good students that are, are really trying to make their way in the Lincoln Douglas world. All right. I'm happy Great. to chat. Thank you. Our judges are back. And everyone should be back in shortly. <laughs> One thing that's, that's been consistent in all the ones I've seen so far, in terms of their presentations, I've heard few ums or you knows. It's, it's really been, they're pretty solid in their presentations. Well, yeah, I believe so. They're, they're both really, I've they really seem like they know what to do all the different teams. They all, I mean, really have really impressed me. Oh, they're coming back now. Oh yeah, we are. <laughs> Hopefully I don't hit my head on the lamp. <laughs> Let's see, is everyone back? I think everyone's back. Okay, great. So can we only have a uh, Team uh, Energy, uh, uh, camera and mics on, and the judges. Sure, just give me a second. I'm having okay. Team Energy is ready. Okay, great.
Thank you, everyone. Team Energia, representing the affirmative position, please give us your three-minute summary. You may begin now. <clears throat> Tying back to my initial point, in order to truly evolve into a type 1 civilization, we need the Lunar Gateway. NASA has currently removed the, gate, the Lunar Gateway from its plan to return humans to the moon by 2004, according to a Space News report. However, it has assured that it isn't casting aside its plans for, moon orbiting, for a moon orbiting space station in order to get a larger budget for it. As such, we're able to see that even NASA believes in the gateway. Currently, as it stands, humanity as a civilization in its infancy, and just how ch and we need to... As such, we can see that even NASA believes in the gateway. As the old saying goes, you can't build a house by starting with the roof. Currently, as it stands, humanity as a civilization in its infancy needs to learn first to walk, uh, first needs to learn to crawl before walking. And that is why we first need to go to the moon in order to be able to move on to greater human projects, such as universalization. First, regarding the ISS, the ISS does not have the same purpose as the gateway. It's not just a drop-in replacement. You can't take it from the current orbit and just move it over closer to the moon. Secondly, pseudo-gravity can be generated on the station thanks to the rotation of um, the station. Uh, also, it is important to say that more, just like I said in my point, more than one thing can be critical in getting us farther into space, yet closer to universalization. Uh, according, to sci uh, according to Science on the Lunar Surface, facilitated by low-latency telerobotics from a lunar orbiting platform gateway, published by the University of Colorado, feasibility is pretty high because they have shown that uh, science can be done on the surface of the moon, even from the gateway. Again. And uh, first, nextly, I'd like to disprove the point regarding multiple nations not working together on this. Uh, regarding that, uh, despite the fact that not all the nations are currently working together, we cannot expect for all the political intricacies to be solved overnight, but the gateway surely is a good initiative. Only a handful of nations currently working for the great for the current gateway proposal. We must learn to cooperate instead of clash with any proposition regarding space, even deciding which chocolate will be the best. This is going to be an issue with every project. Secondly, uh, China and India having a net profit of, of 10.7 billion, with, whereas the others had 9.44. That is a difference of uh, oh, just a bit over a billion, which is not that big of a difference in the larger scheme of things. As you've seen with the previous arguments, the gateway is critical for humanity to expand its horizons. As I mentioned in my point, multiple things are critical for getting into space, yet closer to the universalization. After all, isn't this what the universalization is all about? Coming all together with different ideas, reaching an end goal for the human race. And with time, we will learn to cooperate without clashing. Thank you. Thank you, Team Energia. Now, it's time for Team New Glenn, representing the negative position, to give their three minute summary. Your time like start starts now. I would like to start off by restating and furthering our own contentions, then by negating the oppositions, then by weighing the arguments of this round. We have argued that the gateway is not critical to expanding human presence in the space, and our first contention was that we can get to Mars and the moon without the gateway, and this still stands entirely. When the affirmation stated that NASA is still considering the gateway as their side plan, does it really seem like something that should be critical for the future of space exploration should be considered a side plan? or put to the side by one of the largest space agencies globally? Definitely not. They've, de they've concluded already that it's not going to be critical, a critical path, as the affirmation even stated, to getting to the surface of the moon. That word critical is extremely important, and the affirmation hasn't validated that at all whatsoever. In their second contention, they stated that it's more beneficial for human research to develop a gateway to the surface of the moon. But again, all of their contentions of the ISS not being as proven as the gateway or as, being va as valid as the gateway are just completely invalid. The ISS can not only store, again, as they even stated in their own speech, a pseudo-gravity, but according to the NASA website, it stores a lot more people than what the Gateway would already store. And a lot more nations have already collaborated and worked together on developing the ISS opposed to what the Gateway would provide. So all universal, when universalization comes to mind, it's definitely going to be in the benefit of the ISS compared to the Gateway, as a lot more nations have collaborated on the ISS than even what the Gateway would propose in the future. And we agree, we can't solve all political issues overnight, but that's not what this resolution has to do with whatsoever. It's not about political issues. It's about a binary or a dual opinion on us getting to space as soon as possible. And it's a bipartisan issue. And many nations have already started collaborating with each other on going to the moon. And many of those nations have already concluded that the gateway is just not going to be the most beneficial system. In their third contention, again, they said that the ISS would serve a different purpose than the gateway and that we can't quote, move its orbit. 
that's not going to be the goal to move the orbit of the ISS. And it would definitely serve a very similar purpose to the gateway, holding more people. And it would be a much better, quote, rest stop, as they stated in their speech, since, as I stated before, it can hold a lot more people and it can hold people from a lot more nations because it's much more diverse than the gateway, which then ties back again to universalization. And in their fourth contention, they stated that it would act as a safety and security checkpoint. Again, the ISS can do this just as easily. Once again, tying back to the fact that the gateway is just simply not critical. It's just the case that if we were to develop the ISS with the money that we could use to develop the gateway again, that it would just help the ISS even more. And we could even develop more lunar research on the surface of the moon directly without having this massive gateway to stop us in the way of our research to getting to the moon as quickly as possible. We conclude this rebuttal by considering one word at the core of the resolution that the affirmation has not simply addressed clearly whatsoever. And that word is critical. The gateway is most definitely not critical and many nations have already concluded that. And the gating is simply more the, the more beneficial option to hypothesize, colonize and universalize from our world to the surface of the moon. And the gateway would just simply not help that whatsoever. And in fact, be worse for us in terms of both universalization and technological advancement as it would limit our nation's uh, space agencies technologically. Thank you. Thank you, Team Nuclear. Now, I would like to ask if the judges would like to ask any questions to any team. Can I have the cameras of all the teams up, please? You may confer in real time online to determine who would answer the question. Remember, anyone and everyone on your team may answer a question. However, they may not return to the question after the team has ceded the floor. I have no questions. I have a very quick question. Uh, so if you could keep your responses uh, somewhat on topic. Um, is there a trade-off at all between a lunar gateway and the ISS? Uh, I'll start with Team New Plan. Well, one of the most significant trade-offs in this case would be cost, as we would essentially be developing, in a way, an ISS-2 that would serve a, a uh, not even a similar purpose, in fact, a less beneficial purpose. It would just be an added chunk of cost that wouldn't, that again, wouldn't be critical to lunar exploration. And it just simply, that would be one deficit. And another would be also safety since the ISS is much larger. It could store a lot more people in the case of a major breakdown on the surface of the moon, opposed to the gateway, which wouldn't be able to store as many people, which again, ties back to universalization once again. Oh, same question to the energy team as well. Yes. Yes. So I'd like to point out that this is not a neither or situation. It's not a better or worse. They currently serve uh, different purposes and um, it, they're not mutually exclusive. That is the thing which we need to keep in mind. Well, thank you. That was my only question. Thank you, Judge Kurt. Any other questions? Okay, so, so now the judges will go to their breakout rooms to discuss their findings. In a short time, they'll return to the common Zoom room to give their feedback should time allow. Please join the breakout rooms if prompted. Can I have all the team's camera and mics on, please? Okay, everyone's gone. How's everyone doing? Great, actually. The, Good. Storm, yeah. the weather could be better, but I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> actually. Well, I like to say everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. How's that? <laughs> Fair. I mean, humanity is starting to do something about it, but questions of ethics get raised. And so we, uh, maybe leave it alone for now. So I, I asked this of a few other teams that I was hosting. Uh, any future space explorers, any future astronauts, any future engineers, 
I mean, oh, I, I got I, one I, hand. I yep, got a couple hands raised. Fabulous. Did this help get you that way, or did you think? Did you did you know about space before you started doing these debates? Were you interested before that? Yep. I personally, I knew about it before. I knew about aerospace, and I personally, I'm interested in aerospace engineering. I learned about it at the school that I used to go to. We had a you know, large program centered towards it. But this debate has definitely sort of propelled my passion for it by a lot. And I did spun the spun debate program two years ago in its first year. And that also helped me a lot. But in this case, this year, it's sort of ramped up and I definitely learned a lot. And it's I'm a lot more passionate for it, I can say now, than I was before because of the program. Fabulous. Anybody else? Yes. yes. Lucky. Yeah. So, like, first of all, like, I was a, a crazy space dreamer from the beginning, like, from my, you know, three years old. And, you know, I used to just wonder, like, what if we have debates or competitions, like, realistic going deeper into space? And I never thought, like, NSS would give this fabulous opportunity to us. And right now, what we're doing is universalization, I, I really want to say, because we are collaborating with different countries, Romania, India, and USA. And I, I really loved it a lot. And uh, it's like they're showing me an arrow to go to space. And it's, it's even making me think more about going, going to space, uh, NASA or something, or being an astronaut. So doing, I think doing this from this age is, will really help me a lot in the future. Fabulous. I also want to add something about that in my regards. I actually, uh, when it came, when it comes to space, I, I personally couldn't be an astronaut. The, the training for it is too rigorous. And uh, my passion right now is software development. And I'd like to mention that when it comes to that and space, this year I had the opportunity to participate into the AstroPi competition held by uh, ESA, which allowed all of its participants to run some code on the ISS and collect data. And here, here, this is the kit we received. And we were allowed to write code, send it to space. And we, get, we received three hours of runtime on the ISS. Wow. Very and nice. that was quite an experience with space. And I definitely want to look into that more and perhaps go on that route. But just to answer your, your comment about uh, maybe you weren't physically up to it uh, from the standpoint of astronauts, you're going to have a lot of opportunities to go to space that my generation didn't have. Uh, mm -hmm. You won't have to be a professional astronaut. That you might be working for a company doing coding and they might buy a ticket on the Crew Dragon to send you up to the space station to do some work. Mm -hmm. So yeah. think about those just tremendous opportunities that you're going to have. Uh, and maybe, I don't know, maybe you're, you're going to be a coding multimillionaire and you might buy a ticket yourself. <laughs> right? So, so a lot of opportunities. Hopefully. Talk about universalization, I think there's going to be, uh, it's, it's going to make things a lot more equal when it comes to being, uh, opening up access to space. That's great. Do uh, you guys have any questions? Because I, I, I do have one more. I'd just like to ask about uh, what was the most difficult aspect of preparing for the debates? Yes. Somebody yeah, personally, for me, uh, the actual topics themselves, I was, again, really passionate for it. So just researching in general was sort of, a, sort of fun for me. I think one of the more difficult parts, though I have done debate at my school, and I was a part of the debate program, the you know, immediate shift from AF to NEG, NEG to AF, so on and so forth, was probably, it was a pretty you know, big adjustment. But again, I, uh, you know, the research that we did on both of our cases before, that was that would say that probably that you know that'd be the biggest you know culture shock for me as a part of this debate. But overall, again, it was just fun, and I had you know I enjoyed my time with it. But that'd probably be the most difficult aspect of it, being able to look at an aspect or uh, you know a certain uh, resolution with completely just opposing perspectives, and being able to weigh those arguments. That was probably yeah. Great. And I personally say that, like, right now what's happening, like, we shift from neg to af after neg. That's pretty challenging. But still, I think, like, universalization, I think it's a, it is a wonderful, like, the most, like, the, the mind-blowing topic that I ever had to debate. And I, I still think, like, we still have some, you know, time, more time, like, six or eight hours from now. But still, it, it was pretty fun. And it is possible to make it. And 
you know, it really proved myself that I can do a better in space exploration. We can do better in space exploration and all. I think that's a great point about the challenge of taking a, a position. Maybe you don't necessarily agree with a position you, you have to take in the debate, whether you're doing the negative or the positive. So, so that really gets you to see both sides. And uh, I think it's a great way to explore any kind of topic. So, so that, that, that's a great comment. Anything else from anybody? We've got about another two minutes before they get back. So we got a little bit more time for discussion. I don't know if the coaches have anything to add. I have something to add. No, oh, sure. I just remembered you said some you said about what anyone does about the weather. <laughs> and that reminds me, the code I ran on the ISS was about detecting cloud formations. That's the data I collected. Wow. So maybe something can be done about the weather. Maybe so. Maybe you'll have that solution. Great. Any other questions? I don't, I don't think so. No. Yeah. So it's, it's been a good experience. Uh, yeah, Tammy. I just wanted to seize the opportunity before the judges come back and we get focused on the outcome to say how incredibly proud and impressed I have been of all the students, uh, especially the four that I've worked with closely. You guys know that. But, you know, I give props to Energy and all the other teams we faced as well. You guys have done a terrific job. Uh, you're, you've, you've, you're one of five, uh, each of you is one of five teams that made it to this, this far out of 12. And you should be extraordinarily pleased with your performance um, and the quality of the work that you guys have done. So congratulations, regardless of the outcome of this round. You guys are terrific. Ditto, because really, um, all of you, I've said this um, to my team, they're probably tired of me saying it, but you know, you're bright lights and you're infusing um, older generations with hope and optimism for what will be going on for our children and our children's children and our children's children, children's children's children. Um, for real, I'm not just saying that. Um, you give me personally a renewed faith in the future generations and what can happen in the universe. Very good. So look, our, our judges are back. Turn it back over to you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Bert. So it looks like our judges are back and it's time for the moment we all have been waiting for. But before that, the most important thing, feedback. So judges, if you would like to give feedback to our teams, please. So for me, this was, a it was very enjoyable, um, just like the other two debates I've judged. Uh, excellent. I think the, the one thing that kind of takes debating skills to the next level is uh, note taking and responding to your opponent's arguments one by one. Uh, because the speeches are so short in this event, uh, it's not really the most necessary in the rebuttals to repeat uh, large portions of what was said in the first eight minutes. Uh, when you have eight minutes of new material to, to respond to. Um, so uh, my biggest biggest advice is to kind of figure out what the, the main arguments your opponents are making and, and try to rebut those and those rebuttals uh, rather than just trying to close the door by rehashing the arguments you've already made. Thank you, Judge Good. Any other feedback? Um, I have to agree. Um, a lot more. Uh, it would it would help for better listening um, and being able to respond to, the, to your opponent. Um, but let me say that both of you guys had some really great arguments. I am just blown away by you guys. I'm just like wow. Um, going into that room just thinking this is you guys are just amazing i don't know what to say you know i'm glad to to hear what you all have to say um but uh but the whole the whole idea of listening and responding to your opponent i think is really important um i think uh um more i guess empirical data could be um uh gained um 
but overall, I think you guys are just amazing. Uh, your arguments are wonderful. And I had, I found myself agreeing with both sides. <laughs> I'm just like, oh yeah, that's really good. So great job, you guys. I I add one thing. I just, uh, uh, when I see all these kids doing their thing, I wish I was young again. This is all the problems we have in this world today like this. And I see, when I look at these kids, I say, hey, we got a bright future. Thanks a lot, judges. That means a lot to us. And now coming to the final point, who will be the winner for this round? Um, just, the, just the rebuttal round? Um, or for the whole? For the whole. Uh, Gosh, it was I, really close. I, I believe on the whole, uh, we had the negative team from uh, New Glenn, uh, victorious. Um, for for me, it had uh, it was largely based off of the the strength of the rebuttals by New Glenn uh, and their ability to both provide factual material uh, with uh, with cited studies. Uh, and respond more directly to the affirmative's arguments. We give a big hand and congratulations to everybody. It's been a great honor having you all and we would like to say the whole winners and losers here. You all have done great. We have got a lot to learn from you people uh, a lot of things that we didn't know, did not know about and got to know from you. So congratulations, and we hope you see in the next round and also participate in the next year. Thank you for joining in the SPUN, uh, May tournament of SPUN 2020. I hope the winning team should consult the May bracket for the next round. Thank you. And thank you everyone for making it possible. Have a good day, have a good afternoon, and a good evening. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. You thank, did you. Great. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, judges, for taking your time to do this. I've been in the role, and I, I know, I know. It's amazing.